Okay, so in the last video, uh, we went through this problem in which um, we were given A. Uh, I could afford $300 per month, and I want to know how much I can borrow. Uh, and um, I have a 5% per year interest rate, uh, and it's compounded monthly. So I'm using this more accurate formula here. Uh, and I came out with um, uh, how much I can afford is $10,000. Okay, so uh, let, let's uh, move on. And uh, there's a little bit of an aside because this, this enters into lots of uh, engineering economic problems. Uh, if we're compounding monthly, M is equal to 12. That's the number of compoundings per year. Uh, if we're compounding daily, uh, then uh, that, that number is 365, and we'd plug that into that general formula. Uh, but if we're compounding continuously, which is very common, um, then uh, M approaches infinity, in which case we would need to do the limit of this compound interest formula, and it turns out it, it's uh, equal to E e to the, uh, the, the yearly interest rate times the number of years. So if we go back to our original problem, say I place $100 in the bank, earning 10% per year, using simple compound interest and compounding only once per year, I have $110 at the, in the bank at the end of the first year, okay. using this formula. Now, if I use continuous compounding, I have $110.52 in the bank at the end of the first year because I use this formula. So the compound interest formula is no longer 1 plus i to the nth. It's e to the i times n. And so the effective interest rate is 10.52% rather than 10%. So we get a little bonus by compounding uh, continuously. So let's take a look at a 10-year 4% loan uh, for $250,000 for which my yearly payment is $30,823. So I use the, uh, the, you know, the P, uh, P given A or A given P, whatever, right? I wanted to find uh, A uh, I can find that by using uh, that, that formula, A formula, where P is, is 250,000, N is 10, and uh, I is 4%. So at the end of the first year, I will have paid 4% of $250,000, or $10,000. So in that first year, the interest only that I pay is 4%. It's the yearly interest rate, right? So that means... I, but I paid 30823 That means that 20823 was subtracted from my loan amount. Right, so now I only owe 250000 minus the 20000 So beginning in the second year, I owe $229,177. So now at the end of the second year, I will pay 4% of that, that balance, or 9167 right? So, But my, my yearly payment is 30823 So, um, but 9000 of that is interest. The remainder is how much I get taken off of my balance. So I can set this up in a table that looks like this. And as I said, in the first year, I paid $10,000 in interest, $20,800 in principal. These two numbers add up to my yearly payment. Right? But this gives me the balance, as we said, as I said in the earlier slide, 229177 So if we look at, let's say we look at year four. So the balance at the end of year three is $185,000. So I will pay 4% of that, 7,400. Okay. 
And the principal that I, I pay, because I'm paying this amount, right? I'm paying this much interest, this is how much principal gets subtracted from the 185,000. Okay? 23,423 gets subtracted, and I'm left with a balance at the end of the fourth year of 161,577, and so on. So one can do this uh, on a monthly base, basis if, we're, if the period is in months. Um, and this is, this is a great way to figure out how much you owe on your car or on your house. So now let's move on to some more uh, problems here. Let's say an alumna of Merrimack Civil Engineering wants to establish an endowment for a yearly $25,000 scholarship in perpetuity. So she wants this in place forever. How much must she donate for this to happen if the interest rate is expected to be 8%? So I'm given I of 8%. Number of periods is infinite, the infinite number of years. And the, uh, the yearly payment is 25000 So I want to know uh, how much does she need to put into this account? So I'm, she's given A, she wants to find P. So A given P is this formula, as you remember, I solve for P, and I'm left with this. So I have infinity and beyond here. Uh, let's simplify that, and you'll, you'll notice that when you simplify, this goes to 1 as the limit as as n goes to infinity of this formula is 1 and the limit of this is 0 and so I'm left with 1 over the interest rate so this formula right here is just 1 over the interest rate so uh, the, the, the amount that she needs to invest is 312,500 Okay, another one. So if, if $10,000 is borrowed at 6% interest, how much will remain to be paid after a $3,000 payment is made four years from now? So um, I want to know the future value. Basically, I just want to know the future value of this, uh, of this situation. So I'm given the interest rate number of years, right, um, the present value of my loan, and I'm making one payment at, at four years. So I'm given P, I want to find the future value. Uh, the value, uh, future value will be F given P times P that's the future value that the future value of my loan, the balance of my loan. How much will I owe, minus the payment that I make at the end of uh, four years? Comes out to eighty nine hundred and ten dollars. Now, what's the effective annual interest rate of a 10% rate that is compounded continuously? We'll go back again to uh, what we said before. If uh, if we use if we use uh, E as the continuous compounding formula, so we're given I is 10%, N is one year, and just assume a one dollar present value, that way um, we'll get the exact number. Uh, for con continuous compounding, we use E. So the future value of $1 is $1 and 10.52 cents. So this gives, as, as you saw before, this gives the effective interest rate. So when you hear that, that term, that's what it means. The nominal rate is 10%, but the effective rate is higher. Okay, so let's go to another problem. How large a contribution is required 
uh, to endow perpetually a new civil engineering laboratory that requires $500,000 for its initial construction, $200,000 per year for operating expenses, and $100,000 every three years for new and replacement equipment. Well, so there's a little trick here. I'm given P and A and multiple F values at periodic times. I want to find what's the uh, present, what's the net present worth. So let's let's take a look at this. This is kind of a new term that I'm I'm introducing here. What I want to do is is um, add all of these things up so that they're all present values. So this my strategy is to convert those hundred thousand dollars every three years to yearly amounts. If I do that, I can see that they're they're equivalent to two thirty-two thousand dollars every year, and if I add those to the two hundred thousand dollars for operating expenses, that's the A. That's the yearly amount. And remember, P over A at infinity is 1 over I. We just did that. So this is the present value of that series of yearly payments. And this is the present value of the construction. Uh, so 6.3 million is the answer. Okay, we'll stop it here. And uh, in the next video, we'll start looking at uh, evaluating alternatives.